Welcome back everyone to our Let's Play series of Transroad USA. So we're here looking at the entire map and there are several things you notice across the map. One is our competitors headquarters locations and then also you can see the various markers around uh, the map for our competitors and their particular trucks and trailers. The big thing I want to take a look at uh, on the map right now are the used truck stores. Okay, and the reason why those are going to be important for us is, of course, for one thing, the obvious reason is that that's where we're going to purchase new equipment as the time goes along. But more than that, this is where the maintenance is done on the trucks. So we have to make note of where these locations are around the map. And you can see the nearest one to us is down here. I believe that's in New York. Then we've got one in Charlotte, one up in Detroit and Minneapolis as far as those that are nearby uh, the routes that we've been running to this point. So we're going to have to keep that in mind because as I mentioned in our, toward the end of our last video, maintenance is going to be coming up very soon on Billy's truck, which is truck number one. And you can see that it is missing the trailer here. And that is simply to denote the fact that it just completed its last contract. Okay. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and let's click on that so we can get just a quicker way to get zoomed in on the map. You can see we got 7,600 miles left before we have to do some sort of maintenance. And the way we're going to do maintenance is we simply drag the truck and you can see if I drag it over to here, then the truck will drive over for the appropriate maintenance. Now, the good thing is if we happen to be in the middle, all right, I don't remember starting that, but somehow it got started back. We want that time to stay still right now. The thing, the good thing is that I have found out is that if you are uh, scheduling maintenance and he happens to be in the middle of a contract, he will go ahead and make his next delivery, then drive over for the maintenance. So that's good. So that means he doesn't sit in maintenance. He'll at least get rid of his most recent delivery uh, before he goes and takes care of that. But we're a little bit away from doing that, but it's not going to be too terribly long so for now we need to open up new york city and let's see um why do we not have anything from here they don't have anything why do they not have anything in for us in new york city that is weird what about augusta if i open up augusta okay augusta's fine i mean we've been to new york several times Boston, we've not been to Boston, apparently, as it's grayed out. But that is very odd that we don't have anything there. Okay, so we can't go to Boston. Let's see. Is there anything around here? What about in Pittsburgh? Let's see what's available there. We can always head back to sort of our home base and start from there. Okay, three trips from Pittsburgh to St. Louis, and if we work our way back out. You can see St. Louis is down here. So Pittsburgh to St. Louis, that's a pretty long way. Okay, I'm not sure I wanna go quite that far right now. So let's go ahead and go to Augusta and see what's offered there. 820 per trip, we're not interested there. There we go, I like this idea. That's going to Chicago. That's maybe a bit long of a trip though but it looks like it is going to be a worthwhile trip. All right, here's here's the one I think I'm going to take. Augusta to Pittsburgh. It's one trip, and I think by the time we're done with that trip in uh, Pittsburgh, we can simply head back to New York and get that maintenance done. I, I think that's what I want to do. So we're going to do that. $2,600 per trip, and then a nice $2,200 for the completion bonus as well. Let's go ahead and set that in motion. Confirm those changes. Now he's going to have a little bit of a drive with an empty trailer, but at this point, we're just going to have to go with that. And we're not going to worry too much about it. All right, let's get time going. And you can see everybody is done. Okay, now our second truck is now done. So time is paused once again. He is in Pittsburgh. Let's click on Pittsburgh and see what we've got. Oh, it just dawned on me why New York City doesn't have any loads for us. Uh, we, we were late on that one shipment, and that hurt our, our reputation there. That's what it was. Okay, so now, now I get it. 
That makes a little bit more sense now because I know we've been to New York several times. But that just goes to show you just how important it is to keep your reputation uh, going in the right direction. Because if you start to lose reputation, you're not going to get any jobs in that particular city. Okay, let's see what we've got here from Pittsburgh going to Boston, which is a good, I like this route a lot because, as you can see, we've not been to Boston. So I like that idea, 2300 per trip. Okay, good. It's four trips. So I like that. It's going to get us some nice money. 2100 per trip, only two trips there. We could go to Detroit. Uh, no, I don't think I want to even think about hitting over there right now. I like this one to Boston. Again, it's two birds with one stone for us. On this one, we get to go to Boston for the first time and hopefully increase our reputation there, get us started in Boston, and also it's good money at the same time. Okay, let's go ahead and move our time on fast forward. We can see that Augusta to Pittsburgh. So now we've got our number one guy. He's heading all the way back up to Augusta, which is not good. Uh, hopefully this doesn't hurt us. Uh, because it's taking him a little longer than I had actually thought it might. So this might turn out to be a very bad deal. Hopefully not, though. So we'll keep an eye out on him and make sure that he doesn't get, get us in trouble there. Okay, so he's going to load up now. We should be in good shape from Pittsburgh to Boston because we were already in Pittsburgh for th this particular job. All right, and this brings up another question that I've got, something else I'm going to have to research, and, and maybe this is something that the game is going to introduce at a later time. But if you notice here on this particular schedule, we've got three opportunities here. And the way this works, for contracts that is, and the way I understand as of now, because I've not had any experience with this, but the way I understand that this works is that your truck will actually move through these three It'll do, like, if, for instance, if we have, well, there we go. We got to Boston, so that one worked out well. We increased our reputation a little bit, so we're going to keep going with that because we know that's multiple trips there. That's part of our four trips. Okay, so if you have four trips, a contract with four trips here, and a contract with four trips here, my understanding is that you have to, number one, you have to have the same equipment. You have to keep the same trailer on the truck for all of these contracts. You can't try to swap out trailers. So that's one thing. The second thing is that it will do one trip for this one, for this contract, then it'll move to this contract, do one trip, then to this contract, one trip, and then it starts all over again, goes back. So in this case, it would go to the second trip, second trip, second trip, and then back around, third trip, third trip, and so on as we continue to move forward. So I believe that's how it works. Now, here's the problem with that. I like the idea on the face of it, my problem is exactly what happened to us in New York City before. What about the timing here? Aren't we going to run out of time and not be able to do one trip, one trip, and one trip? Or whatever the case may be. Let's go ahead and get the time going again there. Oh, wait. We're, why are we idle? Was that a single trip? I did not think so. Apparently it was, though. Okay, so we're now in Pittsburgh once again. And I kind of like the idea of going to Boston some more. Let's see what the cost is. 1100 somewhere around 1100 for all of these. Okay, ooh, I like this one. This one gets us back to New York City where we need to repair our reputation. So, yep, automatically this one jumps to the top of the list for me. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take that. It's only one trip, which is perfectly fine. Anything to New York City would be a good idea for us right now. There we go. We've got that going. Start the time back going. But again, the so, so like right now, we've got three days to get this load over to New York City. Now, it takes a little over a day. Okay, we're going to estimate and call that a day and a half. But we got three days to get it done, and that's... I don't know how I could really work that right now. So I need to do some more research and see exactly how that would operate. Um, also, I learned some other new information that I think is really game changing in how I'm thinking about the game uh, up to this point. I had been under the impression that 
each of these trucks and these drivers had a home base. For us right now, that's in Augusta. That's our only depot that we currently have. So that they would always, at the end of every contract, well, there we go. Let's see, that was, okay, that's Boston. A special contract appeared in Bismarck. Okay, right now, unfortunately, I can't really deal with that. But what's happening is I had been under the impression that each of these drivers would simply go. Oh, there we go. Now we're going to have to deal with it. Contract is done on our first driver. And you notice one, one more time that we still have some mileage left. He's not clicking off quite as many miles as quickly as I thought he was going to, which is why I continue to give him contracts. Um, but we're not, I'm just trying to be sure I'm not letting him get too far away. All right, we'll come back to the discussion about home base here in just a moment. But for now, once again, let's make sure that we are there. Can we open up some? No, we still can't. What about in Boston? Anything in Boston? There we go. That's a nice one. Back to Augusta. Now, we don't want to go to Charlotte. That's a little bit too far. Where we are. That's very short trips there to Monty because I don't know how to pronounce that name, and I'm not even going to uh, mess with it. Okay, so Boston to New York, two trips. All right, even though it's not very much per trip, I would consider that one. Okay, yeah, let's go ahead. Let's look. This is three trips, so I'm going to take it just because of that. That should give us a little bit more of a reputation boost. Let's get our schedule pulled back up. Yeah, we need to repair our reputation in New York. So let's go ahead and do that. I think that's worthwhile. And we'll keep a close eye on Billy as he continues forward. Okay, so back to our discussion of the depots and home, uh, home base for these guys. So I was under the impression that each of these guys had a home base. In this case, it's Augusta because that's where their truck is stationed and that's where um, everything has been out of is Augusta. So I was under the impression that they would always, regardless of where their job ended, so whether it was in Chicago, Detroit, Minneapolis, and so on, they would always, once that job ended, if I did not book them another job, just like we saw in the first video in the series, they would always make the trek all the way back to Augusta. It turns out that is not the case. Okay, the developers were nice enough to answer a question I had on the Steam forums with the information that what they will actually do is... Oh, here we go. Let's see, we've got a special contract offer. There have been some shortages on our farm. Now, this is agricultural. I'm actually not sure if we can haul agricultural stuff. I do not remember seeing a special um, allocation for that, a special license that we needed to purchase. Let's see. So it starts, it ends. Payment bonus is very nice. Wow. Okay. I'm going to have to decline this because we're right in the middle of some things. Oh, I really wish I could do that though. I really would like to, but we're right in the middle of, of some things. We don't have an empty truck available. So unfortunately we're going to have to pass that up, but it turns out going back to our discussion of depots, once again, what they will actually do is a driver who does not have an active contract in order to go rest, he's going to have to go back to the nearest depot, not necessarily his home depot, no pun intended. So that is, that changes things for me and how I look at it going forward. So what that tells me is really a good option for us would be to kind of spread these depots out a little bit uh, at the beginning and try to sort of broaden our territory Let's just see what we've got around. Uh, Detroit actually does not have one. Okay. Uh, Pittsburgh also does not appear to have one. I'll zoom in just to make sure. Okay, let's drag over to New York. It does not have one. Now, we know there's one in Boston because we saw that in our last video. There it is in Boston. Okay, and thankfully it appears to be visible from a good distance away. Let's see when it disappears. Okay, it's still there from that perspective. Okay, there we go. Washington, D.C. would be another fairly close one, uh, probably the closest one to us other than Detroit. Let's sort of scroll a little bit west. we got one in Indy. Okay, so that's what I think one of the 
things I really want to do as far as expanding our business is before we get into the business of expanding our HQ in Augusta, I think one of the things we really need to focus on is expanding out and getting new areas opened up. So we know there's one in Boston that's available. So then I'm thinking, all right, we need to get out to Washington, D.C. Uh, in fact, I might even think about doing that one first. And then, of course, we can work our way over to Indy because once we purchase these things, we've got them. So I think that would be a great idea for us. Uh, if for no other reason, then we need to keep our competitors from getting them for the time being. Now, I also know we can buy out competitors. I'm not sure if they can buy us out, but if we get big enough, we can actually buy them out. But that's a long way away for us. All right. So once again, truck number one, which is Billy is done with his contract and he is in New York City. All right, first things first, let's go ahead and click on that. Okay, he's getting down. Ah, once again, it wants to unpause the game very quickly. And then my guy scurries out of town as quickly as he can. All right, so we're getting pretty close. I tell you what, let's just go ahead and do this. This is a little bit early, I think, but let's just, for the purposes of of learning about this, let's go ahead and drag him onto there. Send your truck to maintenance in a truck shop, okay? So let's see, the journey is going to take two hours because we're already in the same city. The maintenance will take two days, okay? So that'll take a little while, and it's going to cost us some money, 26400 So a little over two days is going to definitely cost us a chunk of change. But thankfully for us right now, we're doing good on the money side of things. But that's another thing I want to take a look at here in just a moment. Let's go ahead and mark yes there. Okay, let's go back to regular time. Okay, it looks like Billy, he should head over to use trucks. Let's take a look here. Okay, three or four trips. So he still has a little bit of time left on this particular contract. You can see he's got a lot of time before he needs to come back in for maintenance. Okay, very nice. You can see over here on the right-hand side, Billy is heading for maintenance, and there he is. So he is now under maintenance. That'll be for a couple of days for him. Let's go ahead and highlight on truck number two. As he continues on his journey, he's still got one more trip to Pittsburgh. All right, so here's another thing I want to take a look at. Let's go ahead and click on Bernie's used trucks. So one of the things that we're going to have to be careful of going forward that I wasn't really paying much attention to at the very beginning is in looking at the different trucks and trailers that we can purchase, well, we got the very baseline model. Okay, which makes sense for us. We don't have a whole lot of money and we don't really need a specialized truck. So beyond looking at whether it has two, three or four axles and what that opens up to us as far as trailer possibilities. The other thing we need to pay attention to is the cost. Okay, the cost and how much this maintenance is going to cost us. So if we take a look at because we're obviously not ready to purchase another vehicle right now. Uh, for one thing, we don't have any room available for it. But let's say that we were ready to purchase another truck and trailer combination. Here we look and we say this one is 2000 per week and it requires maintenance every 40,900 miles. Okay, so that's good. But what happens if we go to the next one? It only costs $1,000 per week and maintenance every 46,000 miles. So you can see already the cost for maintenance and general upkeep is going to be a good deal less. It's $1,000 less per week for this slightly uh, more expensive model. Now, again, you're going to pay for this. Okay, up front, it's eighty four grand versus sixty five grand. So you're going to pay more up front, but along the way, it has over five grand more miles before maintenance is due, and it's half the cost per week. Then if we look as we continue moving forward, now we're into three axles and you can see very low here, 31,600 miles as opposed to 46,000. So a lot more maintenance, a lot more often. Then the fixed cost triples. So that's another thing we're going to have to pay attention to. Yes, having the additional axle is going to give us more availability of different types of loads we're going to be able to carry, but this definitely comes at a cost. Then if we move up, you can see, wow, this one, four axles, but it's going to need maintenance constantly. And the fixed cost is huge. 
fixed cost is even larger here. But if you notice, look at the number of miles. You go from 8,000 to 31,600. And then finally, the most expensive model, 4,000 per week, 18,500. So right now, this is a much better deal, relatively speaking, because I think overall, we're going to end up spending a lot of money in maintenance. But again, that is something that we're going to have to pay attention to. And of course, you also got fuel economy in here to deal with. As we look at the different numbers here, 5.5, 7.2, 6.0. So there's a lot of things to be uh, taken into account for the truck side of things. Then we look at the trailers. So if we go for the least expensive one, 33000 to purchase, 400 per week. Okay, then 48.8, 700 per week. So already you can see a good deal more expensive both up front and per week. Then we continue moving up. This one's a little bit more expensive per week, not near the jump, the same jump. And it's almost twice as much up front. So then you look as we continue going on flatbeds, same amount, 800 per week as we were just looking at and roughly the same cost. So you can see how this continues to increase. There's the livestock, 1,100 per week, a little bit less up front, and so on. So that's something we're going to have to keep in mind as we continue to grow. But for right now, we're not near making those type of decisions. Right now, what I'm trying to do is expand and take care of sort of the bottom end of the market, these mail deliveries that they keep talking about, and some of these lower end deliveries that don't pay near as much money per mile and per job, but... For us, they're very simple, they're dry goods, and we're able to make a decent profit. I mean, we're doing pretty good, 129,000 right now. Now, of course, we're gonna pay a nice chunk of change here shortly because we're getting some repairs done and our general maintenance done on our number one truck. But these are all things we're gonna have to keep in mind moving forward and will affect our ongoing strategy. The last thing we want is to invest in a truck and have that truck overall lose money for us. Okay, let's take a little bit more of a look. Let's see the schedule. Okay, so he's still got one, one trip remaining. So we've got a little bit of time for him. You can see so far we've really only spent any time on the first of the four tabs. All right, okay, and he's done. Wow, okay, I could have sworn he had one more trip to do. Okay, apparently he was ending that trip is what happens. So now we are in Boston. Now, let's just for a refresher, if we click on the depot in Boston, you can see it's going to cost us 150 grand up front plus 3500 per week. Now, granted, we're not ready to purchase this yet because I'm not interested right now in taking on a big loan because that would give us more costs. We're doing good financially right now, and I want to keep that momentum going for a little while before we think about incurring a great deal more cost like 3500 per week. But it would give us an additional two slots equal to what we have in Augusta. So a starter depot for us, not upgraded in any way. But that will give us an idea of sort of what we're striving for at this point. We'll need 150 grand plus. We'll need the ability to immediately start uh, purchasing trucks because we don't want that depot just sitting there empty. So we're going to need quite a bit of money in order to get that thing going. All right, let's go ahead and click on Boston, see what kind of jobs we've got. Uh, we can get one headed back to home base. That would be 718 per trip. It's a short distance, so we're not going to probably pay that much. Another one, 775. Another short distance to Monty at 861. So that's definitely the most we've seen so far. Or we can go back to New York City. Now, I'm inclined, even though it's a little less uh, per trip and the completion bonus isn't all that great, what I'm really interested in here is getting us back to that area in New York. Okay, let's go ahead and do the New York. There we go. Confirm the changes. And drag our driver onto that. And we're off and running. Okay, let's go ahead and follow him along. Now, pretty soon, we should be out of maintenance. Now granted, I don't remember exactly which day and all that that we went into maintenance, but I am interested in getting him back on the road because of course, anytime he spends in maintenance, 
is time he's spending not making us money. Okay, so overall, I think I'm getting a lot more familiar with how the game works. Uh, again, there's a lot more to it. Okay, and we're done with that one. So we didn't make a whole lot of money there. A nice little sum, but again, we didn't really do that for the money. We did that for the experience and the reputation. There we go. Now we're opening things back up in New York City. So I like this idea quite a bit. Now let's take a look at the jobs we have available in this area, 1500 per trip. That's a very nice one, but we're going to Pittsburgh for that one. 1000 per trip to D.C. And if we go down here, we're not quite ready uh, to get some of these other jobs. That's okay. We are doing quite nice as time goes right now. There we go. Let's go ahead and confirm we're headed to Pittsburgh with what looks to be the best option for us at this point in time. Let's drag our truck onto the route. And now things are up and moving. I'm waiting for that notification from Bernie that our truck is ready to go again. All right, let's slow things down just a little bit because one of the things I want to look at is, again, as I've mentioned before, there's a lot of information available to you in this game. We've got menus all over the place that... I'm trying to spend as much time on as I can, but there's really so much going on, even with just two trucks, that it's hard to really get an in-depth look at this without just pausing the game and taking the time. So going back to our trucks info screen, we've spent a lot of time here on the main, I guess the contract info screen. I see, what does that say it is? Contract data, yeah. So this is where our maintenance information is held and also tells the current contract and the driver as well as the licenses and gives us the ability to fire if we so desire. We can also come and look at revenue and expenses. This is huge and will be extremely important as time continues on and we have to go through various levels of maintenance and all that uh, sort of thing. So you can see here revenue, $50,000. And remember, this is truck number two. So he hasn't been with us near as long as truck number one. But expenses, only fourteen eight. So we, right now we have a profit of 35200 Also, if you look, you can see what we purchased this particular truck for and what we could sell it for if we so desired. So right now we're in good shape. Now, the good thing is this expenses number is an entire number. So it lumps in all of the costs from the fixed cost to the fuel and so on. This maintenance cost will be huge moving forward. Uh, and in fact, we're going to take a look at that whenever we get our truck or first truck out of maintenance and just to see how that's impacted. All right, let's go ahead and speed up time a little bit. And we're going to come back over to our maintenance here. It seems like these two days are taking forever. So already you can see 62,900 is what we've had for revenue on this first truck. So almost 13,000 more in revenue. But again, this was our first truck. There we go. And ultimately, you can see very quickly, I'm not sure where he's going So in such a big hurry. He didn't even give us a chance to do anything. But now, instantly you see that the expenses jumped to 56000 That's the effect that the maintenance cost is going to have on us long term. And that's why it is going to be so difficult. Because if you look at this, our profit now goes down to only $6,700 lifetime. Wow, that's how important the maintenance cost is. So that's why we're going to have to really pay a lot of attention to that. All right, let's go back to New York City here since he's still pretty close. Um, I tell you what, actually, I don't think he's going to have anywhere to turn around until he gets to Boston, realistically speaking. So let's go to Boston and see what kind of orders are available there. Okay, so now he is hes fresh out of maintenance. He's as good as he's going to get with the truck. Oh, I like this one. $3,800 per trip. This is very nice. And it's four trips. Again, I love, love these longer trips uh, and also more trips. Those are all good. Okay, so let's go back up. I like this Chicago trip and bring our schedule back up. Yeah, $3,800 per trip. That is excellent. I'm going to go ahead and finalize that. And let's get this guy on the road. 
All right, so one truck, there we go. Trying to make sure that everybody's doing what they need to. All right, here he comes. Let's see what's going on with our other truck, New York City to Pittsburgh again. Trying to repair New York City right now for us is a big thing. Try to get back on track before I made that, that mistake on missing a contract due date. Okay, so he's back in... Wait, who are we following here? We are following... Oh, we're truck number one. Okay, so this is the one we're following. So he is... He's loaded up in Boston. Now he is headed over to Chicago. Let's scroll out some. There we go. Oh, didn't quite want to go that far out. Let's zoom back in a little bit. There we go. No, it won't stay there for some reason. I want, this is perfect right here. This is the, the look I want, but as soon as I take the focus off of this truck, it's going to spread it back out, which is more than I'm ready for it to do. Okay, let's come back to the maintenance screen. All right, 17,800, which is not near as much as what we had in some of the other trucks that we saw that were up over 30,000, uh, and in some cases more than that. Let's take a look at our other truck. Okay, so both trucks are in that somewhere around 18,000, 18,500, whatever it is, whenever it's completely full over here. Okay, there we go. We are now done with contract for truck number two which is now sitting in Pittsburgh. Let's head over to Pittsburgh and see what we've got available. All right, we could go to Chicago for $1,800 per trip uh, and two trips. All right, not bad. Here's a four-tripper for $2,000. Very nice. $1,800 per trip to Chicago. Only two trips, though. And three trips at $1,900, or we could go to Detroit for $1,200. Okay, so I'm not really interested in any of that. I like this one. It's the most per trip plus a nice completion bonus, and it's four trips, so it's a longer duration job, which I also like. It. That's, less, that's less tedious work for us to have to do, and I'm trying to focus on that because let's face the facts here. The reality is for us is as we continue to expand, the last thing we want to do is have a whole bunch of one-trip uh, jobs going and contracts going so that we spend all of our time trying to find new contracts and less time with our trucks on the road and making money. All right, so he's just got loaded up and truck number two is now headed off from Pittsburgh on his way to Chicago. And let's, see, let's go ahead and get rid of the city info. We're not particularly worried about that. Now, Chicago is a good place for us. We're headed, looks like, to the airport and also doing some work for the farms, local farms there. So there, there you see our work work. So we're building up a lot of reputation now in Boston as we continue to do this. So let's scroll back out now. This time I do actually want to scroll out a little bit more. So let's take a look. Remember, our competition is down here in Memphis. We got Oklahoma City as well. Those are our two closest competitors. So we're going to have to be very careful about them getting too close to us and where we're located and really infringing upon our ability to expand in the northeastern area. For now, though, um, I can only hope I don't know anything about our competition, really, and I really don't want to do too much research on them. That takes some of the fun uh, away at this particular point in time. As we get farther down uh, the line and we get a lot more trucks and a lot more money that we're earning, we'll deal more with the competitors. But for now, I'm really more interested in our own strategy um, I didn't, if you remember back to the first video, I did not like the idea of starting way up in the northeastern part of the map. I don't like that at all. That doesn't make sense to me. I wanted to start in Memphis, which as it turns out, one of our competitors is there, uh, which we didn't know at the time. But this is a more centralized location. Actually, where I would have wanted to start was Nashville, uh, because number one, it's the closest to me in real life. And also, there is a lot of really centralized uh, locations in Nashville. You've got lots of interstates that intersect there and give you the opportunity to go in all different directions on the map from there. But this map looks a little bit different. Um, I still would have liked to have had Memphis because you can see this would have given us several locations fairly close by and fairly large 
cities as well. Whereas up in the northeastern part of the map, we're stuck going one direction. I mean, we have to head south and in general, west. So right now I'm trying to make a decision. Uh, not that we have to make it right now, but I'm trying to get an idea of where I want to go. And I think the next thing I want to do is go ahead and we're going to need to save up a good deal of money before this can happen and look at taking out a loan as well in all likelihood because we, we're going to want to purchase in either Boston or Washington, D.C., another depot. That's going to give us access to a couple of more slots for trucks. And along the way, we'll, we'll come back to Augusta and we'll get that uh, expansion done and where we can handle more trucks and trailers there as well. However, I'm more interested right now in getting another depot opened up. And then as soon as we open the depot, we're going to need to open it up with at least one truck running out of that depot, at least, because it's going to cost us quite a bit per week in just simple upkeep. So a lot going on, a lot to think about. Um, I'm really enjoying this game so far. Unfortunately, once again, we've run out of time, uh, but I'm really enjoying this game so far. I hope you guys are as well. If you have anything that you'd really like to see me show in the game, uh, any questions you have, I'm not going to in any way claim to be an expert in this game. But if you do have questions, we have a great community that we're building here at Knee Pit Gaming. And I'm sure that if, if it's not something that I know the answer to, then we have some other people around who would be glad to help you out. That's just the kind of community that we're building here. Uh, and I appreciate you joining me. Thank you very much for your support on not only this series, but all the series here on the channel. And stay tuned for more of our Let's Play series of Transroad USA.